Espresso coffee tastes mighty good. That's not the reason why I've got to get back up to that sugar shack. Hey, everybody. Jim Tedesco here. Ryan <coughs> Cowan. <laughs> and at Pogo, too. Millennium County Railroad version 2.0. Come on up here, you crazy dog. Oh, come on, try it again. There you go. Now, <laughs> I'm telling you, he's a crazy dog. We got a special treat today. He and the wife went down to uh, Clewiston, Florida. That's about 70 miles south of Sebring here. And we went and saw the last run of the sugar train for the season. I don't know what that actually means, but they had number 148, the steam, uh, steam logo, pulling several cars full of, uh, look like cane, uh, sugar cane, for the processing plant. So we caught it on the way down while it was in motion. That's at the very end of this video, so stick around for it. But I also got a whole bunch, I think there's 36 still shots. We got to get some close-up of it after they parked it. It's a really beautiful machine. They did a great job of restoring it. So I will try and narrate this as best as I can <laughs> since I'm doing it after the fact to kind of keep you in touch with what's going on. So enjoy. The whole video is only about four minutes long. It's a short one, but it was a day to remember. So stand by. We'll get the camera turned around and you can see for yourself what, what I got to see today. And here we go. Now these were still shots that my wife took. This is when the train was first coming in. I was able to blow up that, this one that you're looking at now. My wife took some really great pictures of it going by. I wish my video would have been as nice. Now here we're at the yard where they were going to park it so we can actually take a good close-up look at it. There were other cars there as well. Uh, oh, there we go. Number 148. There's the... Uh, Ah, <laughs> and there's the uh, the train, the engine itself. Beautiful train. It's made by American. I thought it was made by Baldwin, but the nameplate on the side said that it was actually manufactured by American Train Company in 1920. So they did a great job of restoring this. It truly is a sight to see. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let me get up in the cab. <laughs> we were lucky to get this close to it because they were kind of leery about letting two people, you know, get get too close to it. Although a few actually did touch the locomotive for phot photography, but uh, I didn't want to push my luck. There were a lot of people there too, but it's it's an amazing machine, and it's pretty big. I mean, yeah, it's not a big boy, but it's still pretty big. You know, compared to us, those wheels are about four and a half foot tall. The drive, the drive wheels. It's just, it's just an amazing machine. There's another good shot of it coming in, and another one. Those, those are ones my wife took. She, she does really good picture taking, probably better than me. <laughs> this is back at the yard. There were some other cars. They were parked. Some of them have actually seen go by behind my house. There's two of the other steel, or diesel locos. 405 and 503. Uh, 503 actually came through here once or twice. But not normally. Here's some more shots. Yeah, i tell you what. I would love to drive that thing. I was talking to the engineer and I asked him, I says, you know, you got to have special training for this? He says, oh, yeah, he says, not many, not many guys can actually do this. So it's pretty cool. That's a nice looking tender, too. That was the word I was looking for earlier. <laughs> That's as close as I was able to get to the cab to be able to see what was going on. And there I am again. The wife taking pictures of me. But anyway, uh... We got a couple more shots, and then we're gonna. We've got a short video that I took. It wasn't very good, but it was the best I could do on short notice. So check it out and enjoy.